let's go ahead and call the Committee of the Whole meeting for January 31st to order. Uh, please note that based on recommendations from the CDC, we still are asking uh, city council members, uh, city staff, as well as members of the public to uh, wear their face masks for the safety of all. We appreciate uh, your indulgence. Um, in terms of starting time, let the record reflect a starting time of 6.01. And with that being said, uh, could we please take the roll? Councilmember Hussein. Here. Councilmember Wood. Here. Councilmember Spadafore. Present. Councilmember Spitzley. Here. Councilmember Garza. Here. Councilmember Jackson. Present. Councilmember Brown. Here. Seven members present. Fantastic. That brings us to public comment on agenda items. The only agenda item uh, for tonight are the interviews uh, for the first ward vacancy. Um, unlike city council, uh, we don't have a sign up sheet, but we do invite folks to come down on a first uh, come first serve basis. You will have up to three minutes to address the council. Uh, just don't all come at once. So if there's anybody that would like to make public comment, come on down. And please uh, state your uh, name for the record as well. We appreciate it. Loretta Stanaway, uh, resident since uh, 1985. Um, as you're considering these folks for the position of the first ward vacancy, I would encourage you to look at things like whether or not they have other employment uh, or other commitments that would uh, restrict their opportunity to devote sufficient time to study the issues, to attend all the required meetings, and to engage with and respond to their constituents. Also, I would strongly urge you to look at things like public service experience, leadership experience, and de demonstrated critical thinking skills. It's one thing for someone to be very passionate and uh, concerned, but if they aren't demonstrating critical thinking skills, that doesn't do us a whole lot of good. Um, I hope that there will be someone elected who does not have a personal or a political agenda, um, who is open to the majority will of the ward and not just to the most vocal segment of the ward. And um, I'm not familiar with any of these um, possible replacements for Brandon Betts other than somewhat familiar with Brian, uh, Mr. Coast. Uh, but in looking at the resumes, the information online and so forth, I thought that um, B, Kavanaugh, D, Daniels, or C, Daniels, D, Dowd, and H, Coast were very good con possible candidates and should be given strong consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have other, <clears throat> sorry, do we have any more public comment? Seeing none, that brings us to agenda item, let's see, four, which are the interviews. Um, we've had quite a few questions, and so what I'm going to do is just very quickly uh, kind of run down in terms of the process for both council members and uh, our candidates. So with regards to council members, we were emailed earlier uh, by city staff. Um, in that email, uh, there were several items included. Uh, one, a letter to council members outlining the process uh, for today's first interviews. Uh, we also had a copy of the letter that uh, staff emailed to all, calendar, I'm sorry, all candidates um, last Friday, which uh, outlined, again, the process for the first interviews. Um, we have a list of the questions for finalists that um, we will actually ask tomorrow. Uh, so when we're looking at those three finalists, um, and these were the same questions that were used back in 2015, and there was a question as to why. Uh, those questions at the time were vetted by law. They were deemed to be lawful, and so we wanted to make sure that we operated within those, those legal parameters. Um, also, a letter that the candidates uh, will get tonight, or have gotten tonight, sorry, on the next steps, uh, if they are chosen to fill the vacancy, was included in that email as well. Uh, if you look in your binder, uh, the binder, binder is incredibly important. We appreciate uh, office staff for putting this together. Uh, very, very well done. Um, we have the four items I just referenced um, in, on the left um, side of your binder. So there's actually a pocket to the left. And you can find those four documents there. Uh, in the binder itself, uh, staff has sectioned off each candidate's application as well as any other materials they provided or emails in support of, of those candidates. We've received one letter uh, for Caitlin Cavanaugh in terms of support. Uh, we did receive one letter from Mr. Samuel Klein, uh, two letters of support for Farhan Sheikh Omar, four letters of support for Brian Daniels, and we received five letters of support for Ryan Cost. If you look on the back, or I should say toward the back of the binder, um, you will um, see actually the ballot for tonight's vote. Okay, So when we get to that point, you will vote up for up to three. You don't have to necessarily vote for three, uh, but you can vote for up to three, and of course you'll sign that uh, and at the conclusion of the, or right before the conclusion of the meeting. Uh, our office secretary will actually uh, read that into the record. 
Um, on the back side of each one of the uh, blue dividers, uh, you'll notice that there um, is actually a section for council members to take notes uh, as well. Okay, so feel free to use that as well. Uh, in terms of the candidates, all 11 candidates uh, have received uh, a folder uh, upon arrival. Uh, if you have not yet received that uh, folder, please see uh, Clerk Swope. He can help you uh, get situated with that. Um, there is in that binder, um, I'm sorry, in that folder, there's a resolution uh, uh, titled 2019-219, uh, uh, which includes council and committee of the whole meeting dates, as well as 2022 committee assignments, uh, the 2022 brown bag schedule. These are quarterly meetings that council uh, holds with the mayor. These are actually publicly posted, and we actually adhere to the Open Meetings Act with regards to those meetings. A copy of the letter uh, staff emailed to you on Friday is also in uh, that folder, uh, which uh, kind of outlines tonight's process, uh, as well as the letter on the next steps if you are chosen to fill the vacancy. Uh, and then lastly, a copy of the finalist interview questions uh, for tomorrow uh, have been prepared, uh, and we wanted to make you guys all aware at the same time uh, with regards to those. We, we certainly want to avoid any um, uh, appearance of impropriety, favoritism, et cetera. Uh, so those are being released tonight for the first time. Um, really quickly, we want to thank each and every one of you. Uh, for being here. We understand if anybody uh, is intimately aware of kind of the, the inherent vulnerability of this process, it's us. Uh, and so we certainly appreciate the fact that you guys have stepped up uh, and that you want to um, represent the first ward in, in a vigorous, consistent, and passionate way. We really appreciate that. Um, and, and we understand too uh, what's in front of you in terms of uh, the steep learning curve um, that you guys will experience this year. Um, the fact that you very well may have to run for re-election this year should you want to fill out uh, that last year of the vacancy. Uh, only to turn around again next year uh, and run for you know a four, uh, fresh set of four years. Um, so we certainly uh, appreciate each one of uh, you as well. Um, each interview we will um, was given sorry an alphabetical interview time based on last name. Uh, again, we want to thank the clerk and, and our office manager uh, for getting these interviews scheduled. With regards to the alphabetical order, again, um, we did not want to um, have any appearance of a favoritism or impropriety, and so we thought that that would be the fairest way. Uh, each interview will last no longer than 12 minutes. Uh, so we will actually have the timer on the day so that you can see it, so that we can see it. And we act, ask that you please uh, respect that, that time limit. Um, each interviewee will begin their uh, time with a personal introduction. What we want to hear in that personal introduction uh, is some information about your personal professional background that uh, you feel is pertinent. Any experiences um, that you believe will assist you in your council work. You think of community service, you think of community organizing and the like. Um, and whether you intend to uh, run to fulfill the final year of the term vacated by former council member Betts. Um, there are three uh, follow-up questions. I will ask those three questions. Those are also in your packet. Um, we will have council members a short break after our fifth interview. Uh, and then after all interviews are complete, each council member will choose one of three finalists. As I said earlier, uh, staff will read them into the record and the finalists will be contacted by 9 a.m. tomorrow, okay? And so what we're gonna have to do at that time is we're gonna have to confirm your attendance uh, for interviews scheduled uh, to take place tomorrow night. The top three vote getters will move on to the second round. Uh, more could potentially move on if there are tie votes. So you think of the first, second place, and then two or three people uh, tying for that third place. So um, again, although we have scheduled our meeting for six, um, our special city council meeting for eight, uh, understand that could be a little bit longer of a night tomorrow. Uh, after all interviews are finalized, council will deliberate in a final decision uh, will be made with seven serving council members. A majority of four will suffice to appoint a new member. And of course, I'm talking about tomorrow's process. Um, a special city council meeting again uh, has been called for 8 p.m. tomorrow night. The only uh, agenda items for this meeting is the approval of the appointment and swearing in of the new council member. If you are cho chosen to fill the vacancy, staff will then contact you on Wednesday of this week uh, by 9 a.m. to schedule a one and a half hour orientation on either Thursday or Friday. Um, there are some, some perfunctory things that have to take place. Uh, you think of uh, your ID, your office keys, tours, uh, but then we also have to, to do some incredibly important things. We have to get you as an example scheduled uh, for introductions uh, with our departmental directors and uh, in different shops within the city. Uh, and also leadership, uh, myself and Vice President Wood will work uh, with each of you uh, to assign, I'm sorry, I should say uh, the winning candidate uh, to assign both standing committee and outside boards and agency appointments. Um, also, if you are successful, uh, know that the council will hold their mandatory annual training on the 10th floor of City Hall uh, beginning at 5.30 uh, p.m. on February 7th. So it's going to be a busy few weeks uh, for whoever uh, is the individual that's chosen by this body. So with that being said, are there any questions? 
Seeing none, Mr. Andre Brown, I did see you come on in, uh, and you are gonna get first crack at it. So once you come on down, come through the double doors. We're gonna have you sit right here to our left and to your right. And we're gonna make sure that that mic is working. So once you go ahead and turn it on, you should see a green light. Go and test it out for us. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? I'm well, how are you? All right. we're, we are doing very well. I certainly appreciate uh, your interest in the position and because we are on a tight, tight uh, time schedule, we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right. So again, um, and everybody is, is kind of getting a look at how this is gonna be done. Uh, in terms of the personal introdu in introduction, just a little personal, professional background on, uh, regarding yourself. Uh, and maybe some experiences that you think will assist you. And then that last piece, do you actually intend to run uh, for the position should you be appointed? All right. So my name's Andre Brown. I'm a Lansing native and lifelong resident. I am a graduate of the Lansing School District. Uh, I currently own four businesses. I'm a limited partner in most of them. We employ a total of 12 people, most of them being Lansing residents. Um, because of my business ownership, I believe I have great leadership and communication skills. Uh, but I'm not here to bore you with small talk of business because it's a job and we all have jobs. Uh, I'm actually sitting here before you today to let you know that I'm committed to serving the first ward. I will announce a campaign to run in the next coming days. Uh, as the person who is appointed is expected to run this election and hopefully the elections of 23. That's two years of campaigning, it's quite a lot. I come from an election and campaign background, and if anyone, I want everyone to know that I am committed and an official campaign announcement will come soon. Uh, I'm ready for the next question. Should I just go into it? So, so Andre, the first question is, why do you want to serve on the Lansing City Council? Yeah, I have an interest in serving. Uh, one, because I'm dedicated to restoring public trust and Lansing's public safety. I'm committed to working with the BIPOC community to ensure everyone in our community feels safe and comfortable. If appointed, I will work with council to aggressively lobby the state to fix our infrastructure for the capital city, and we need to look better to retain jobs. I also know that the First Ward residents really care about public safety and housing. I fully support uh, the council's ad hoc committee to improve housing conditions. And I hope to work with city council to ensure that all dwellings are well maintained for the safety of our residents. I also applaud the mayor and the city police department's effort in hiring social workers. If appointed or elected, I do hope to work with the mayor to increase the number of social workers while protecting the positions of our local officers. Thank you, we appreciate that. The second question is, what do you know about the responsibilities and the regular activities of this elected position? Yeah, a lot of people believe that council is only parks and trash and snow removal, but the responsibility is much greater than that. Uh, you're required to meet 26 times a year, but you're also the legislative body of the municipality. Uh, that job definitely entails more than parks and trash and snow removal. Uh, the responsibility is much greater. Uh, the, that responsibility is to create policy through the form of ordinances that attract business, development, and most importantly, jobs for the Lansing community. Council also has the responsibility of appointing an internal aud auditor to serve at their pleasure. And I know that there are many responsibilities that I didn't name today, but they're duties that I'm 100% willing to learn. And Okay, thank you so much, I'm sorry. Um, with that being said, last question for you, Andre. What qualities can you bring to the council that distinct, distinguish you from other candidates? Well, I have a background in working with the state government, the state legislature, and municipalities across the state and some across the nation. Uh, I'm a registered lobbyist and a political advisor to a variety of organizations from the state. Uh, I'm familiar with the legislative process. While all policymaking bodies slightly differ, the process across the board is pretty much the same, and I have firsthand experience working with them. I'm not sure if the other applicants do. I believe I'm the only, the only applicant with the, the direct 
and uh, hands-on experience of working with state and local governments. Right, fantastic. Is there anything else, uh, Mr. Andre Brown, that you'd like to add that you think is important for us to know before we decide? No, nothing more than that. I'm from, I'm not a carpet bagger. I'm from the first ward. I truly believe and understand the issues that uh, people within the community are facing. And I hope to be appointed and or elected this year or next year to fully represent the will of the people. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so sorry. So our next candidate is Miss Caitlin Cavanaugh. Caitlin, if you want to come on down, you saw how it was done. Appreciate you being here. Absolutely. And as with Mr. Brown, just make sure the green light is on so we know we're going. Yep, absolutely. Fantastic. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks well, for this opportunity. No, well, we certainly appreciate um, your willingness and your desire to serve. Uh, so that being said, again, we're going to give you a little bit of time just to give us kind of a brief introduction. And then what we'll do is we'll just go through the three questions. Um, and I did confer with the city attorney in terms of um, follow-up questions and things of that nature. And the reason why we have to be careful with that, this was actually discussed in 2015, um, is that the questions have to be uniform. Um, and so for folks that are watching at home, if you feel as if there's not enough back and forth, and uh, again, the reason is uh, to, to, to make sure that we're above board in terms of this process and to make sure that it is um, a, um, a legal process, if you will, and we have to make sure that we are uniform in our questioning um, and that should we, as an example, have any follow-ups, those follow-up questions would have to be asked of every single candidate. Okay. Mr. Chair, you might also want to point out that you do have application materials in front of you. Also. Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. So, um, Ms. Caitlin Cavanaugh, you have the floor. Thank you. <laughs> I, I direct the Adolescent Development and Juvenile Justice Lab at MSU, and I um, am the director of the Juvenile Risk Assessment Team in uh, partnership with Ingham County's 30th Circuit Court Family Division. I am also a volunteer in the community, whether that takes the form of volunteering at the Ingham County Animal Shelter, um, serving as a poll worker, or serving as a court-appointed special advocate, which means that I advocate in court on behalf of youth who have undergone abuse and neglect cases. Um, so that's, that's a bit about my personal background, but I can also tell you that I am a researcher at heart, uh, not a politician. I'm a person who believes that the best way to move forward is with good, strong evidence. The only thing I didn't hear was whether or not, and, and maybe I missed it, do you uh, actually intend to run? Oh, I do. I knew I missed something. Yes, I do intend to run both in 2022 and in 2023. Okay, fantastic. Um, Ms. Cavanaugh, why do you want to serve on the Lansing City Council? I really see this position as the natural um, extension of my volunteerism, but I see that it also ties in my expertise in terms of juvenile justice. I know that one of the primary challenges facing the city of Lansing right now is youth violence, particularly youth gun violence. In fact, the Lansing Regional Chamber of Commerce recently conducted a survey, and that is what is most concerning to Lansing residents at this time. And so I wish to serve because I'm a service-minded person Person. Um, I come from a family of public servants, and I wish to continue that generational legacy here now that I've made my home in Lansing. And I feel that the best way for me to do so is by extending my current volunteerism into um, city council. All right, we appreciate that response. Um, secondly, what do you know about the responsibilities and regular activities of this elected position? 
Sure, so city council serves as the primary legislative body. Um, and what this means is you're in charge of developing policies and figuring out how to pay for them. Specifically, this position is to represent the first ward where I've been a resident. And so that means that I would be in charge of representing the interests of folks from the first ward. I want to highlight two components of what it means to be on city council so that I can illustrate how I'm prepared to serve in that role, if that's okay. Um, the first has to do with budgeting. So um, my, in a, in a different career before my academic career, um, I was a political staffer in the European Union Parliament. I worked for um, a representative, um, Barbara Matera from Italy. This is essentially the equivalent of the US House of Representatives, except um, for the continent of Europe instead of the country of the United States. This was in 2010 during the global financial crisis, and the representative for whom I worked was on the budgetary committee. So as you can imagine, we faced a lot of challenges and difficult decisions at that time in terms of how best to budget. So I do have experience in terms of um, that, that balancing the budget um, in political situations. Um, I would also like to add that as an academic in my current career, I've earned 16 grants, many of them large national grants. And each time you get a grant at a university, you have to do a lot of budgeting, rebudgeting when things go awry. Um, and so I feel extremely equipped to um, help the city of Lansing balance its budget in a way that might include making very difficult decisions, especially as we come out of the pandemic and the economic challenges that are associated with that. The second aspect of being on city council that I would like to highlight is consensus building. And I feel that I am an excellent consensus builder, whether it is through serving on national committees for um, professional organizations, like the Society for Research on Adolescence, um, or whether it is working with the state of Michigan on the Raise the Age legislation, which raised the minimum age of juvenile jurisdiction to uh, 17. I am really good at working with people from different backgrounds in order to find an outcome that everyone can agree is the best possible outcome. So you asked what um, city council, what, what's the function? Um, to me, a lot of that function has to do with consensus building, building and budgeting in order to have a good outcome for the residents of the city. Thank you. And you certainly touched on uh, some of number three, but what qualities do you believe you bring to council that may distinguish you from other candidates? Sure. So I feel that I have the expertise to meet the moment. Um, so I am certain that all of the other candidates bring a lot of excellent background, passion, expertise. However, my expertise is juvenile justice. My expertise is in reducing youth violence. And because that's one of the primary um, emergencies <laughs> that's facing the city of Lansing right now, it's a true public health crisis, I feel equipped to serve in this moment. And I can say that because of my work with Ingham County 30th Circuit Court Family Division, I am the person that sees those challenges in Lansing through the raw numbers. So what that means is I am the person who manages and who analyzes all of the juvenile justice data for the county. And so I have a very unique perspective on exactly what the challenges are, both in terms of rehabilitative programming and in terms of pathways into crime. Um, I don't mean this to sound braggy, but only because it's relevant. I'm an internationally renowned expert in this area. And so the reason that I stand out from other candidates is because I have a specific set of skills that match the needs of this moment. Thank you. And is there anything else you would like uh, for us to know before we uh, vote later on tonight? No, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. We certainly appreciate your willingness to serve. Thank you. All right. The next candidate is Mr. Brian Daniels. I do believe, yep, I did see Mr. Daniels in the audience. I'm gonna come on down. And again, make sure that green light is on for us. Why don't you go ahead and speak into it just to make sure. I think we're good. Yeah? Yep, fantastic. All right, awesome. Appreciate you. How's it going, Brian? I'm well, uh, how are you guys? Fantastic. Good, I, I appreciate you being here. Um, you've seen how it is done, a little professional, personal background, and then um, before we get to the questions, um, let us know whether or not you, um, yeah, nice. Uh, whether or not you plan to uh, run should you be appointed. Thank you. Yep. Uh, well, first, I just want to say thank you guys for the hard work you've put in over the last couple of weeks. I think we've all kind of uh, uh, had to come together very quickly to make this happen. And I just appreciate the work you guys have put in to make this possible tonight. I'm really happy to be here. Um, I was born in Lansing. Uh, my father still lives on the south side. I grew up in the Lansing area. I'm one of six kids. Um, 
I, like so many other people in Lansing, didn't necessarily have great opportunities as a kid. Uh, when I was in fifth grade, we ended up being homeless, and only because my grandfather was a veteran did I have the opportunity with my family to move into the VFW National Home for Children. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is an Eaton Rapids, and it's totally supported by veterans. Um, and so I actually continue to do fundraising for them now today. Um, the VFW gave me an opportunity to learn civic duty. Um, it's something also that my mother always pushed into me and, and stepping up for people and speaking up for people. And after I graduated high school and joined the military in the early 2000s, like so many other people after September 11th, um, I, I felt that sense of duty and it compelled me to not only join the military, but I went over to Iraq. Um, in 2005, I was the sole survivor of an IED attack. Um, my, uh, my right foot was blown off and reattached and I had to learn to walk again. Um, outside of being completely broken and having to rebuild, uh, I think that this, this, this personal experience taught me a lot of empathy. I've, I've, I understand what it's like to, to lose hope. I think that one of the things that we're dealing with in our community right now, um, you know, I guess nationally is even is a mental health crisis. And I think that having been through it myself and being able to help other people fight through it is something that I've continued to do. Um, after I got out of the military, I moved to New York City um, and I met the owner of a boxing gym. He helped me rebuild my body and I started teaching classes. I started teaching because one day somebody quit and I stepped into that position. I saw an opportunity to, to follow my passion and, and help others where I could. Um, I had a son during this time, his name's Gabriel, and when he turned two, we wanted to come back to Lansing so that he could grow up this, with the same childhood his mom and I had. Um, when I got back, I, I worked at a few different places, but I could never find something that was my own. I needed to, I needed to be able to, to advocate for people and speak my truth. In order to do that, I opened up my own uh, gym with the help of a couple of friends. It's called Empower Lansing. It's on Michigan Avenue. I was lucky enough to open up on the east side, right on Michigan Avenue, and be a part of the resurgence of, of the east side and the Michigan Avenue corridor. I think that we've seen a lot of progress, and I want to continue to make sure that happens. Being right there, I also see and, and interact with a lot of people on the east side on a regular basis. Those that I haven't met, I will meet um, in, in, the, in the coming months because I will campaign for 2022 and 2023. Um, what I love about Empower is the sense of community that we've built there. Some, you know, what's, what's great about the city is that there's one degree of separation. And so you know somebody who's probably been there and they can tell you about the energy of it and the acceptance of it and understanding that no matter who you are or what you believe, um, you can find community together. Uh, this is something that I preach there. It's something that I think we see in the first ward. There's such a diversity there. And it's, it's, part of what I, it's part of what I live. I think with, you know, un, with the first ward, we see, we see so many different people. And if, I think a perfect example would be at the farmer's market. You see so many different kinds of food. For me personally, Smoothie Queen is, is heaven to me. Um, once, like, I guess, like so many other small business owners, outside of the day-to-day -day budget and the grind and the responsibility of that, um, I had to deal with COVID. I had to figure out how to, A, survive COVID as a small business owner, work through it, and adapt to the real-life risks that we were facing. The minute that we could teach classes outside, I did that. When we came back inside, I made everyone wear masks, and I still do, because I believe in doing what is right, not what is easy. Um, I understand that there's a lot of division right now. I think that everyone is really frustrated, whether it be with local, state, or federal government. I think that there's a lot of distrust, and I want to be a part of healing that process. I, I've, because of how many times I moved as a kid and because of my life experiences, I've been open to so many different points of views, and I've been able to find community in each of those situations. I'm able to find common ground in each of those situations, and I think that that, that will help me positively represent the first ward and all of the varying views that they have. I understand that there is always the loudest person in the room, but there are so many people in this ward, and I want to make sure that everybody's voice is heard. Um, during COVID, I was uh, appointed to the Parks Board, and you know, as of late, I've been advocating, I know, I'm sure you guys are aware of the light issue in the parks right now, and I've been advocating for a solar light option 
um, as a way to to facilitate change and keep people safe in Lansing. We are, or there are ordinances within the parks that I think have to change as well. And I wanna be a part of making sure that people are able to access our parks in these green spaces and then creating more green spaces in the future. You know, I, I've reached out to so many people in the city in the time that I've been back just to, again, create community, get to know people. And because of that, I've had great support for this opportunity tonight. And and while I um, I'm thankful for all of them, you know they they believe in me because I I show up. Not only do I show up, but I speak truth. I'm not I'm not like forced by uh, s social pressures. I I listen. I have compassion, and all I want to do is give the most of myself to this job. I've been able to build a team at Empower that can take care of the teaching and take care of the studio so that I have time for these responsibilities, these committees, these meetings. Um, my son is very excited about the concept of this. I've communicated with him and my wife, Maggie, and making sure that they understand the duties and the time commitment that I'd be making, not to this, but to the two campaigns I'd also be doing. I think a steep learning curve is like the perfect, the perfect way to describe all, all that we're facing, whoever you pick. Um, but like myself and the uh, 10 other people who applied this evening, you know, we passionately do love Lansing. And I, whether you, whether you select me or not, I, you will see me because I will be campaigning. And, and whether or not I'm selected, I hope to work with whoever you do pick to make sure that we continue to make progress in Lansing. My, I know I'm running a little on time, but uh, one of the things that I'm doing uh, right now is planning with uh, an organization called uh, Brave Space to have a talk at Empower called Why I Didn't Kill Myself. You know, I, we have all of these teens right now with this gun violence going on and all of these trauma that we're facing and all of these social pressures that we're facing. And I'm trying to create with them uh, spaces like Brave Space to, uh, to be able to express that, to not be afraid to, to speak up and, and to not be, able, uh, not be afraid to give people um, that, you know, that opportunity. I think that people wanna be heard and I believe in giving them that opportunity. Um, I know I try to answer some of the questions there, but is there anything that I didn't say? No, I appreciate that. That was incredibly thorough. Here's what we're going to do, because I want to move through this process yeah. with fidelity. Uh, and so we're, gonna, we're going to go ahead and ask the questions. Um, and you certainly Got touched it. on a number of them, but you can feel free to build upon. Okay. okay. So number one, why do you uh, specifically want to serve on the Lansing City Council? Um, I, you know, I think, that it's, I think that this is something that is a natural progression of my life and a continuation of the duty that I made to to my city and my country when I joined the military. I believe in service. It's something that I do every day at Empower. I know that it's a business, but I very much serve all of the people that come in there and give them the best of me, and I wanna do that for the ward. I wanna be able to make sure that everybody's heard and listened to and able to find common ground so we can get actually find solutions and get things done. All right, I appreciate that. Uh, what do you know specifically about the responsibilities and regular activities of this elected position? Well, I understand that we're going to have to work on budget, and I think between being a small business owner and being on the parks board and working on the parks budget, you know, I've, I've had a taste of that. I understand that it's bigger, and again, that there would be a learning curve. But outside of that, with the committees, you know, I, I understand that there's going to be investigations into how things are run and what needs to be fixed and I'm committed to learning everything that I need to to be successful with that. We appreciate that. Lastly, what qualities can you bring to the council that dist distinguish you from the other candidates? Well, I think that, that, I, think that I bring uh, a certain amount of energy and leadership uh, that a lot of people, uh, I don't necessarily know if the other candidates have, but I know that's something that I, um, I exude. Uh, I've, I've been lucky in life with the, with the places I've been and the people that I've seen that I have the ability to communicate with everybody and to find common ground and to get people to listen and, to, and for myself to be able to just take in what people are saying instead of putting up walls and closing people down. I don't believe that that's the successful way to get things done. Fantastic. And la I'm sorry, last you said that last time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything else you'd like to add that you think is important for us uh, to know before we vote later on tonight? Um, 
You know what? No, just uh, I appreciate I appreciate the time and thank you again. Again, you will see me. Um, I will be campaigning. So whether or not I'm chosen, I'm sure that we will cross paths at some point. And for the people in the first ward, if you don't know me, um, I plan to hit the ground running whether I'm chosen or not. I want to meet with the neighborhood leaders. I want to come up with plans. And, you know, Empower is always open. If you would like to come talk to me, call me, find me. I would love to meet with everybody. That's all I have. Thank you so much. Thank you guys very much. Thank you for being here. Yeah. All right, do we have Mr. Benjamin Dowd uh, with us? Fantastic. Mr. Dowd, why don't you come on up? We appreciate you being here. You want to take a seat, make sure the green light is on. How are you? Good evening. Hello. Doing well. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, same thing. We're going to go ahead and give you a, a period of time to introduce yourself, uh, professional, personal background. Uh, any um, any service to the community, as an example, that you might think uh, will be advantageous to you as you, uh, you know, work to represent the first ward, and then of course uh, we want to know whether or not uh, you plan on running. Should you be appointed? And then we'll go through the series of questions. Okay. Awesome. All right. You have the floor. Thank you so much. So good evening. My name is Ben Dowd. Um, I've lived in Lansing for seven years now, um, and for six of them have been actively involved within the community in a variety of ways. So currently, I serve as the president of the Old Town Commercial Association. I've been on that board for six years and the president for the past four. Um, uniquely for me, uh, we, we've not had an executive director that ran things in Old Town for the past two and a half years, and I was the person lucky enough to step up and fill that temporary role as I um, served the presidency as, and ran in my full-time job, right? So my full-time job, I worked for, uh, I had 15 years of banking background, and four years ago, transitioned to the statewide nonprofit that's housed here in Lansing, CEDAM the Community Economic Development Association of Michigan. So my job now is, is working in community development and, and dealing with communities throughout the state um, who, who do the very same work that I do within Lansing. So I've certainly had an opportunity to be involved not only on the ground in my community, right in our ward. Um, Old Town obviously splits two wards, first ward and fourth ward. Um, but being right there, being active and being a community leader already within that, within that space. Um, some of my other involvements, I am the co-chair of Suits in the City, uh, which is the local LGBTQ organization. And one thing I'm proud of our representation within the city is we are currently, um, and I'm hoping or hosting um, training right now with the Lansing Police Department. So if you've not seen that, uh, we are training every single police officer on the force right now. In fact, I'll be back tomorrow at the training center to educate our police department on issues and in, in, uh, topics re re uh, regarding the LGBTQ community. Uh, so it's a very important space within our community and I'm honored that I get the opportunity to really work with every single one of our officers on that, on that important topic. And then as I mentioned, four years working in the community economic development field um, has led me to really work with, with several of you, several people within the community and ensure that we are continuing to grow the Lansing that we know that we need to grow. Um, yes, I do intend to run. Um, I not only in 22, but in 23, to fill this seat. I'm very passionate about it. Um, I've, I've definitely seen a lot, of, a lot of things come out of my time with Old Town. I'm very proud of where Old Town has, has put itself. But even between my experience there and cross collaboration with other parts of the community in Ward 1, um, you know, working with folks over at the Allen Neighborhood Center and, and meeting up with our, our monthly CED meetings across the community to talk about what's really happening. What is our housing market look like, what's going on with, with uh, compliance within the city, and we're bringing people in to talk to us every single month about truly what's going on and staying up to speed on what, what the needs are within the community. So I feel a very good connection to where we are as a city and understanding where we need to continue to grow and what some of those gaps are. So that, that's kind of who I am and, and what brought me here. Um, sure. Um, we appreciate that. Why do you specifically, uh, Mr. Dow, want to serve on era as part of this body, the Lansing City Council. Yeah, so if you would have asked me a couple of years ago if I wanted to do this, um, I would have told you absolutely not. Uh, I, I felt, as I, as I got ingrained into the city, um, I, I felt, oh my God, that's, that's wild. Well, I had the opportunity and I was a graduate of the Lansing Citizen Academy, so I came through the, the program and did the 12-week cycle where we got to go through all the different departments. And then, through my experience with Old Town, I also was really uh, fortunate, I've worked with almost all of our department heads within the city on special projects, 
uh, parking, Dear God parking. We've talked parking for years. Um, but we, I've worked and I've had the opportunity to listen to people. Once I started to, to really step back and listen to what people had, we're all, we all have the same concerns, right? And so if I can be that voice for, that, for somebody that has a concern and I can take that and connect them to the person that needs to, to address that situation, well, then I've done a good thing for that. And I, I think I have a really strong ability to ta oftentimes take situations that are, are not easy or conversations that are not easy and help connect folks within the right areas of the city. And I, I'm already doing that. One of the things I like to um, take a little pride in, and many of you were here on council several years back when we changed the name from Grand River to Cesar Chavez. There was a lot of turmoil. Um, there was a lot of upset people. And I really, throughout that time, um, it occurred to me that I didn't understand why there was so much of this turmoil happening and, and, and stepped up to be the voice of reasons for so many people to say, look, we're two communities that need to come together. And through that, really formed a nice bond with the, with the solaces and, and ensuring that we work together as an organization. And now we both are members of each other's organizations. We work together. That was not an easy time. I'm sure those of you remember the hours and hours upon public comments sitting here um, from one side or another. And it's really, I think for me, being able to use my leadership to bring people together across the city, and especially in Ward 1, um, that, that need a strong person to do that. We appreciate that. What do you know about uh, Mr. Dowd, the responsibilities and regular activities of this elected position? So what has already been said, of course, are the, are the main duties, right? We've got policy to take care of and budgeting. Um, and, and I think really the, the basis of this in, in the most important part of this and, and our job would be nothing if we didn't have the voice of our constituents. I think communication within the city, within the people we deal with is so extraordinarily important. I will tell you as a resident, that has been one of, one of my struggles with, especially in the, in the, within the last um, person in this position, the, the ability to get communication back and forth just wasn't there, right? We, it, not having any response was not appropriate. So not only do we have the expectation that when we come together as a body, as a council, to set those policies, to, to go through the budgeting process and advise the, the um, current administra administration, um, but really outside of that, taking the time to understand what people want in the community and what they need. And if we, we do it on our, our own personal beliefs, our own personal feelings, well then we're just acting on a city that we want individually. And so I think being a strong person for the folks that, are, that we're representing is, is by far the number one job of us as a council member. Thank you. Uh, what qualities can you bring to the council that distinguish you from the other candidates? So I mentioned budgeting. Um, I've been fortunate enough through several nonprofits I've been involved in, and now as my role as the COO of CEDAM, um, budgeting is my job. So uh, multi-million dollar budgets each year, that requires uh, a months of process similar to how, how the city kind of manages that budget process um, before it's ever gone for vetting and approval. There are months and months of reworking the budget and going through that. So budgeting, I am very comfortable in, uh, leading also back to my, my many years of banking and, and finances. Um, I think the, another great thing, as I mentioned already, is my current um, involvement and relationships that I have with so many departments in the city. I, I, I really can call on my phone many people today if I needed to and say, hey, I needed this taken care of, or hey, we have an issue, can we, can we get somebody on this? And people are very responsive. I, I have a very good back and forth relationship already with so many of those folks, um, which is just the nature of the, the responsibility I was given over the past couple of years. Um, Again, I mentioned the Citizens Academy, having graduated through that, um, obviously an opportunity to open my eyes to so much of what happens throughout the city administration, city council. And then I, lastly, I really think, I'd, I would say, everybody would say they're a great communicator. I hope you are if you're interested in this. But I truly do believe that I've got the communication ability to make sure that people feel heard, feel validated, and, and then take concerns or issues or whatever somebody is, is needing from me as their representative to the people to, to make sure that it happens, that it gets done, or be able to talk to them and let them know why it shouldn't happen, right? So being able to have those tough conversations, I really think I, I bring a strong sense of communication among the constituents and that would make me a prime candidate. Thank you. 
Is there anything else you'd like to add that you think is important for us to know before we vote later tonight? Nope, I appreciate the opportunity. We appreciate you being here. Thank, Thank you. All right, that brings us to our last candidate before break. Uh, and this is for Mrs. Lysandra Jones. Fantastic, we appreciate you being here. Come on up. All right, so like the others, if you wanna just speak into the mic, let's make sure that's working uh, before we get started. How are you doing? Good, how are you? We're doing really well, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. All right, so like the others, um, we're gonna give you a period of time to just talk a little bit about your personal professional background, uh, anything that you've done maybe throughout the community that uh, uniquely qualifies you for this position, uh, and then like the others, um, if you could please let us know whether or not you intend uh, to run for that final year uh, of the term should you be appointed. Thank you. Okay, um, let's see, where do I start? I'm probably one of the older candidates here, uh, but I've, uh, I'm a 2015 retiree from the state of Michigan, um, Department of Treasury. I started a nonprofit organization in 1998 called SB's Love Closet that um, helped the community with clothing, that type of thing, uh, interview techniques. Um, and it kind of still in existence. I still get calls for clothing, although I don't house clothing anymore, but I always have um, resources for people. Um, let's see, I'm involved in uh, elections, been involved in that for, I don't know, eight, nine years. And one of my um, desires is to see more education on election, educating um, people that really don't know who they're voting for. <laughs> they just vote for somebody because they're on the ballot or um, just, you know, just really educating people about um, elections before they do it. Uh, so yeah, if I do plan to, to run. Um, it's a passion to be in the community. I've been in the community for a long time and I've seen a lot of ups and downs. So I'm ready for more ups. <laughs> okay, we appreciate that. And I think you know, that's a perfect segue into the first question. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to serve on the Lansing City Council? Um, I believe that I would be a uh, highly effective council member because I'm anchored in the community, um, and I would like to, you know, see the council move forward. Um, and it's not just about policies, not just about agendas, rather, but it's about the people. And seeing that the community gets the things that they need uh, to hear the voice and I've always been the voice for the underdog, so I really am uh, a people person when it comes to the community people, the underserved. Um, so I believe that my voice on the council would be effective. Thank you. Uh, what do you know about the responsibilities and regular activities of this elected position? Well, I know that um, as before stated, there's you know, council sets policies, uh, approves budgets, um, I guess determining the tax rates, uh, adopts ordinances and things like that, um, resolutions to govern the city. Um, protects the public interest. So that's pretty much what I know. Okay, fantastic. Um, what qualities can you bring to the council that distinguish you from other candidates? Well, I believe um, I'm not, you know, I don't know the other candidates too much, uh, but I believe that my integrity, um, 
I have a long standing and I'm not a bully, but I believe in pursuing. And um, I, I mean, a good counsel person is, is able to communicate intelligently and uh, get the point across without having to argue with people. I'm not a big on arguing, but I do like to come together and um, get things done. I'm not a big talker, but I'm a big walker, I guess you could say. <laughs> I believe in, you know, doing the walk, not a whole lot of talk, so. Okay, thank you. And Ms. Jones, is there anything else you'd like us to know before uh, we make our decision later on tonight? Um, just that uh, I believe that I would be a good fit with the council um, because, you know, the council is about the community and it, it is for the public. Um, and I love being in the community. I love being uh, with the people out here. I'm not afraid. I've been in my area um, where I live for um, almost 30 years, which is on the east side, in, in my ward, Ward 1. And so I know the community. I know a lot of the needs. I know the, what people talk to me about. Um, and there's a lot of need out here. And uh, so I would like to be one to help meet those needs. So. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, so, so here's the deal. First and foremost, I want to speak on behalf of uh, this body and say how much we appreciate you all. Um, you, were, you were here on time. Uh, you were incredibly prepared. Uh, and because of that, uh, we certainly are ahead of schedule. Uh, to be fair to those folks that uh, are scheduled actually after the break, um, we are going to take all the way up until 730. And so we're not going to actually adjust or modify that. Um, so what we're going to do is go ahead and stand at recess until... 7.30, we'll come back 7.30 sharp, and we'll begin with Mr. Samuel Klein. Thank you. Sorry, folks, and just so you know, there is food in the con uh, council conference room. Okay. okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and reconvene this uh, meeting. It is 7.30, uh, and very quickly, we have a number of folks uh, that have arrived um, even since uh, we took the break and we want to make sure that um, we are fair um, and you know in, in terms of this process and that everybody is getting the same uh, information before actually coming down to the well and interviewing uh, before this body so just very quickly uh, when you came in you were supposed to do a couple things number one uh, you were supposed to sign in uh, and that will help obviously office staff um, with regards to you know if we need to, to make any changes on our name with regards to spelling a name address that type of thing um, and the other piece is you were supposed to pick up a green folder um, and in that green folder are a few documents. Um, first of all, uh, resolution 2019-219, uh, which includes all council and committee of the whole meetings uh, for 2022. Also the 2022 committee assignments, the 2022 brown bag schedule that we have quarterly with the mayor, a copy of the letter staff emailed uh, you all on Friday, which uh, outlines the, the interview process that we're engaging in tonight. The letter on the next steps, um, if you are chosen to fill the actual vacancy and a copy of the finalist interview questions uh, that will be part of the interview tomorrow night. So we wanted to make sure that we got those out to you uh, far enough in advance, number one, to consider. Uh, but we also wanted to be equitable and make sure that um, folks had um, an equal amount of time to, to actually go over those and consider those. Um, that being said, each interview uh, will last no longer than 12 minutes. Uh, when you come up, we are going to ask that you give us a brief introduction of you, both professionally, personally, uh, discuss maybe some of those things that uniquely qualify you for the position, um, and then also, um, we are asking, and I don't believe this is actually part of uh, your committee packet, we are asking um, you to let us know whether or not you intend to run uh, for the final year of the term, uh, which means you would have to actually run for election this year uh, to fill the position next year. Um, we, at the end of this process, uh, we will open it up for uh, committee uh, deliberation, committee conversation, and, 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 and just entertain comments from the body. And then what we will do um, is we will actually vote uh, for not less than one, but not more than three um, of our top candidates. We are, this isn't rank order or anything of that nature. Um, so we're just voting up to, or for up to three uh, finalists. Um, if, 
sorry, after all um, interviews are final and after we have voted uh, tomorrow, city staff will actually reach out by 9 a.m. Uh, to those top vote getters to actually uh, schedule those interviews uh, that will begin tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Each interview uh, will be 30 minutes uh, and will consist of a QA. and a um, I believe there are seven questions and those are also packed, part of your packet. Um, if you are chosen to fill the vac uh, vacancy, staff will contact you on Wednesday of this week by 9 a.m. Uh, in order to schedule a one and a half hour orientation uh, for either Thursday or Friday. Uh, further, uh, Vice President Wood and myself, we will work with you uh, to assign both standing committee and outside board and agency appointments. And if you are uh, successful, we want to make sure you also are aware uh, that we have our annual mandatory council training on Monday, uh, February 7th at 5.30 p.m. So with that being said, because we are on a tight schedule, we are going to jump right into the second slate uh, of candidates. The first being Mr. Samuel Clowns. If you could come on down. We certainly appreciate you being here. I'm going to come through the double doors and take a Nope, you can come right on through into the well. Let's go ahead and take a seat right over here to our left and your right. Yep. Oh, no, it killed my shoe. <laughs> All right, go ahead and push that button. Make sure the green light is on. It is. Fantastic. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Adam? You know, I'm doing really well. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate um, you all being here. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and um, get you started. Again, a, a brief introduction in terms of what you've done professionally, um, you know, maybe a little bit about, um, you know, your personal background, uh, anything you've done in terms of community service um, um, or anything to support folks, uh, you know, within this community or any community you've been a part of. Uh, and then lastly, um, we'd like to know if you intend to run for the position should you be appointed. Yeah, Thanks. of course, of course. Um, thank you all for being here tonight, as I just said. Um, thank you, you know, for listening to all, uh, all of us. I've gotten to speak to a lot of people, uh, both on council and uh, in the audience uh, prior to prior to this year even. Um, and uh, I just really appreciate the in involvement from the Lansing community. Uh, my name is Samuel Klon. I have lived in Lansing for over 20 years at this point. I've lived in the first ward uh, almost the entirety of my life. Uh, I, I think that it's sufficient to say that Lansing is a big part of who I am. The people that live here, the people that care about our city and our education system and and our streets and our parks and our roads. Uh, those are the people that, that raised me, that babysat me, that taught me about civics, government, being a good person, balancing a checkbook, uh, still working on that one. Um, and I've, had, uh, I've been able to have a really good large network uh, over those 20 plus years, uh, a history of involvement that includes really large organizations uh, like the Michigan Mile, which is an annual project done by Sparrow Hospital at the Lugnut Stadium that I really love being a part of, uh, as well as um, much less extravagant and uh, bureaucratic systems that focus on getting food and clothing and hygiene items to the homeless population in Lansing. Uh, as well as a group that works to build, maintain, and stock food pantries uh, throughout the city. At the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic in 2020, I was able to help found an intersectional group that worked on critical needs uh, and mutual aid at the time. Um, while, while everyone uh, was really uncertain about what to do and how to do it well, uh, I was able to help work on not only resources for mental health, for unemployment benefits, for childcare, uh, but most importantly, we worked on masks. We were able to work with people who sew for a hobby or for a living to get handmade cloth masks to homes and to hospitals. We were also able to get a very large donation uh, of food. We were able to move thousands of pounds of food from the Great Lansing Food Bank, from community partners, individuals, from restaurants who couldn't open anyways and had inventory that was going to spoil. And we moved hundreds of uh, different places and thousands of pounds of food and got that directly into the homes of Lansing families. Um, I am, uh, I'm very enthusiastic about Lansing and I'm very enthusiastic about the prospects that the First Ward has for the future. Uh, oh, okay. sorry, the other question, yes. Uh, yeah, I do intend, if I get the appointment, to run uh, in November for the final year of this term. I think that anyone uh, who gets the appointment should absolutely uh, do that. It would be a detriment to city council and it would be a detriment to the first ward if, if we had four city councilors in as many years, which is democratically possible. Certainly is, I appreciate that. Uh, so then the next series of questions are really intended to allow you an opportunity to build upon uh, some of the things that you've already uh, addressed. Why do you specifically want to serve on the Lansing City Council? Yeah, I would, I would say that I have a sense of duty about it. 
I, I would say that Lansing has, like I said in uh, at the beginning, continuously poured into me. Um, and so I feel that that I'm only able to speak with you all tonight, not only competently about city government, but in the English language because of people in Lansing. When I was an immigrant from Korea and I came to Lansing, Michigan and to America for the first time in 1999, uh, the Lansing community was able to help me, not only through Sparrow and physical education and physical development with my physical disabilities, but also with uh, learning the English language a couple of years later than is normally fluently acceptable. Um, and I've also been able to not only be supported uh, as, as an infant and as a toddler by, by Lansing, by the people, and especially by the school district and teachers and paraprofessionals, but also I've been able to be involved. I've been able to be challenged by rigorous and intense programs, um, some of the best in the United States, including the International Baccalaureate Program at Eastern High School, and I was able to uh, do that and also receive the honor of being a valedictorian when I graduated. Uh, I, I think that I've always had really good role models about city involvement, about public service, about giving back to a community. Uh, for example, we are sitting in the Benavidez room of the Hollister City Hall. And my friends and the families that poured into my classes in the first and second and third grades, they were the Hollister family and the Benavidez family and uh, all, all sorts of you know, really great families that, that cared about Lansing, cared about its children, cared about its schools, cared about each other. And so I think that that uh, other very formative memories you know, about, about being really proactively cared for is, is something that I, I feel compelled to try to continue, that other people in Lansing, everyone else in Lansing, deserves to feel as equally cared for and as equally empowered as, as I've always been. We appreciate that. Uh, what do you know about the responsibilities and regular activities of this elected position? There are uh, a number of duties that I understand to be under the purview of city council. Uh, firstly, you know, logistics. There is, like you said, regular city committee assignments, committee of the whole, uh, the internal kind of city deliberations, as well as representing the city to other municipal, uh, municipalities, to the county, to the state, to the federal government, if Lansing needs an official representative. Uh, it's also my understanding, and the most important thing that I care about, is the appointments uh, from the mayor and confirming those appointments to boards and commissions. I think that the vast majority of actual work about decision making, uh, about the way that our neighborhoods are affected and our people are affected, uh, they really have the rubber meet the road through those boards and committees. And I think that it's incredibly important that due diligence is done and that we encourage people that are proactive, that care about our neighborhoods to be aware of this, that they can go out and they can apply for these positions. There are uh, a number of back end things. Uh, I think any good leader needs to meet with the ward. They need to be communicative. They need to uh, go to events that aren't their own events. They need to just attend events in the ward. They need to be immersed in community with people. This isn't just to feel heard, but also to just be able to hear and see and understand what people know the ward are saying instead of just reading an email, instead of just getting a phone call, being there with them, having experience. That is really a strong motivator in terms of getting, getting public trust and faith. And then there's a lot of competence back end stuff that I think people don't really talk about and think about. You know, being able to do the readings, knowing what's coming up on the agenda, being able to read the budget, understand the budget, being able to ask questions of other people that work for the city to make sure that you have the clarity to explain it to citizens when they have questions, when they have concerns, and to be able to take ideas from those citizens and bring it back to this body and to other bodies within city government. All right. What qualities, uh, Mr. Klein, can you bring to the council that distinguish you from other candidates? I would, I've asked myself that question a lot and I think that it's really boiled down to a holistic view of, is there somebody that's going to do a good job and also is that person going to be able to do the right thing? Um, historically, there's been a lot of citizen involvement that I've been able to be involved in that I've 
I'm proud to, to say that I've been a part of, uh, not only appearing before this council before uh, in different iterations and in different years, but also uh, encouraging others being able to answer questions, know what the city does, know how the city does it, know what resources we have, and we, knowing what, what resources Lansing currently does not have or what is more of a county or state prerogative. Uh, I think that it's incredibly important to mostly be that conduit of information between government and citizens, uh, especially at, at the municipal level. Um, one of the things that I'm most proud of that distinguishes me would be uh, during the coronavirus pandemic, I was able to work with Thomas Morgan, who was a county commissioner at the time. There was a group of people that were in transient housing or in homelessness, and they needed the ability to uh, be out of the cold, be out of, out of conditions that were especially unsanitary given our understanding of, of the COVID virus at the time. And uh, we were able to uh, work on not only getting the funding and getting uh, spaces for them that were appropriate, but also talking to, talking to people uh, directly and convincing them that, that this was a careful and, uh, and loving thing that, that was provided for them. Uh, one of the people that was able to take advantage of this opportunity was uh, in her third trimester of pregnancy at this time. And I recently got to tell Thomas that I'm very uh, very convinced that the actions that he did as a public official, the actions that I was able to do interfacing with people in the community, uh, it saved that child, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really grateful for that. Uh, the last thing that I would point out is uh, just kind of on the endemic gun violence that Lansing is facing. Um, I was able to speak to the county commission last year uh, as some of these ideas have been unfolding, uh, not because... Uh, not because I thought about running for county commission or anything like that, but because I really care about it. Eleven and a half years ago, I lost somebody that I loved due to gun violence here in the first ward. Um, and, and it's been over a decade, and it still affects me. It still uh, changes the way that I look at, at my neighborhood. And uh, I, I can't imagine um, having that be a much more endemic thing, not just for me, but for the people that I go to school with, for the people that I care about. Uh, I think the most important thing for, for any government, especially for Lansing right now, is to have that level of pain, that experience with gun violence be represented as honestly and as directly as possible. Thank you. Is there anything else you think is important for us to know before we vote uh, later on tonight? No, sir. Thank you, Mr. Clown. We really appreciate <clears throat> Sorry, you taking the time uh, and your willingness. Our next candidate is Mr. Ryan Cost. So if Ryan could come on down. Again, through the double doors into the well. And you take a seat uh, to the left of us. Make sure the green light is on. How are you, sir? I am very good. How are you, President Hussein? I'm doing very well. I appreciate that. Um, so just as uh, with the last candidate, uh, please, if you could give us a brief introduction, sorry, uh, regarding professional and personal background, uh, anything that maybe you've done to service the community already, um, not just this community, but any community you've been a part of, uh, and then also let us know uh, whether or not you actually intend to um, run, should you be appointed uh, for that, that last year of the term. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll get into um, four very specific questions. Okay? Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so uh, just to tackle that, um, that first question, I intend to run. Um, in August, if there's a uh, primary and in the general in November, if I get past the primary, um, and I intend to run the following year. Um, so my parents were lifelong residents of Lansing, and so were their parents and their parents before them. Um, I attended Geyer Park Elementary School um, and grew up with fond memories of spending vast hours at my grandparents. Now, I moved to DeWitt where I attended school um, after second grade, um, participated in sports, various clubs. Um, and I may have been living into it, but I spent much of my childhood right here in the first ward of Lansing, um, near South Washington and Philly Street, where my grandparents lived. Um, Betty Cost, my nana, was very active uh, in the community her entire life, and she made sure to know that I knew where I came from um, and what it meant to be a part of a community. Um, little did I know attending the after school program at Moore's Park Pool, um, making uh, popsicle stick fuzzies, um, it would put me on a path of a lifelong craving to serve other people. 
um, she used to tell me, you work hard and love hard, and some of the fondest memories are Moore's Park Pool in the summer with her watching me from the bleachers. Um, and oftentimes I will go and sit where she sat and reflect and think. Um, and I grew up around other people too that made Lansing a better place. Um, Howard and Dorothy Jones, um, Claude Ramey, um, who was on a uh, park board and, and, and fought for Geyer Park. Um, and read what my grandma wrote and she would talk to me about um, issues facing the city, things like that. I was seven years old and I found it extremely interesting. Um, my mom's dad, Cliff, repaired water meters for the Board of Water and Light for 35 years. Uh, my grandpa, Cost, worked for Diamond Rio. Um, I grew up always being told you fight with passion for the things you care about uh, and no one gets left behind. Um, I spent my childhood doing things that other kids didn't think was fun. The month of July um, was always consumed with Christmas in July. And I'll never forget being on the roof of a 90-year-old's trailer, tarring it at 10 years old, helping this, this, this woman. Um, because my dad worked for the sheriff's department, we also participated um, in Shop with a Hero and Toys for Tots, um, distributing the toys on South Pennsylvania Avenue every year. We continue to do that. That is a family tradition that we do every year. Um, I moved back to Lansing about a decade ago. Four years ago, I purchased my home on North Magnolia Street uh, on the east side. Over the past year, uh, when I have gotten out of work, I have walked nearly every street in the first ward and beyond, cleaning up neighborhoods, talking to folks who live, <clears throat> live there, and listening to the issues that they face in their everyday life. I've also gotten onto the board of the East Side Neighborhood Organization to get more involved with my community. Um, currently, I work for the state of Michigan. Um, I am a proud member of the Labor and Trades Union, um, AFSME Local 5, um, and have been since 2015. Before that, I chose to work and manage a quality dairy on Pennsylvania and Kalamazoo and turned it around um, even when they said, you should work at the East Lansing store. I said, no, this is where I want to be. Um, I also spent nearly a decade at other local businesses here in the First Ward, managing at times millions of dollars in sales. The people I had the opportunity to meet working in the First Ward came from all different backgrounds, giving me life lessons in their own way each day, and that is what makes this city, to me, a community. Um, excuse me. I would be remiss if I did not mention the most important person in my life, my husband, Daniel, um, who has stood by my side as I have ventured out to help the community. Um, and he also is uh, a Lansing native um, and manages the same QD that I worked at as an elder store manager there um, and has actually partnered with um, some of the things that we've done in the area, allowing us to um, do a facade cleanup of that location as well as uh, use their, their trash. Um, and then I also have two of the most wonderful girls on four legs, Manny and Maddie. We did not think those names out when we named them um, because you shout for one and they both come. Um, and that's just a small part of who I am and why I love Lansing and look forward to serving with you. Fantastic. So, uh, Ryan, why do you want to serve on the Lansing City Council? And again, this is an opportunity to build upon some of the uh, information you've already shared. So I want to serve to make Lansing better, a livable community for all residents and businesses. I want to serve because the people of the First Ward needs a voice that hears them, their ideas, and their concerns, and <clears throat> help, <clears throat> help, excuse me, and helps with great outcomes for constituents for the future of our city. All right, we appreciate that. What do you know about the responsibilities and regular activities of the selected position? Yes, so the responsibilities are actually laid out, um, as, you, as you know, in, in the city charter, Article 3, the legislative branch. Um, a few of the responsibilities would be working as a body um, to make the best decisions for the citizens of Lansing, providing constituent services and bringing resources to the citizens of the first ward, um, advocate for the adva advancement of the First Ward residents, parks, services, and businesses, 
uh, establish amend repeal ordinances, pass resolutions, deal with day-to-day -day issues that affect lives and safety of the citizens, <clears throat> review, amend, oversee, and approve a city budget brought forward by the mayor, take recommendations from the mayor to address issues within the city, approve appointments to advisory boards, set ordinances forth for the qualifications of each department head. Now I know these are just a few of the responsibilities, um, but I know it's also my responsibility to say I don't always know the answer and I definitely don't know every rule. Um, and it's my duty to learn from each and every one of you because I know that's how a good council member is made is by listening to the other members and working with them to learn. Thank you. What qualities, Mr. Koss, can you bring to the council that distinguish you from other candidates? I spent thousands of hours working with the residents of the First Ward and beyond, connecting them with city services and departments such as the Board of Water and Light uh, to improve their lives. I've talked to hundreds of residents from Potter Walsh neighborhood to Grosbeck neighborhood, North Town to Fabulous Acres. I've listened to their concerns and their needs, often addressing those needs with the city. My goal is to help bring meaningful change to the places in the first world where people live while building meaningful bonds with the citizens, small businesses, and our service partners like MDOT, the City of Lansing, CSX Rail, Canadian Rail, um, and numerous others. Um, I know the First Ward extremely well. I enjoy being out uh, every day and every night, either on, my, on foot or in my vehicle. Last night, I was out in the neighborhood reporting streetlights that were burnt out. That is what I do every night. Um, and that's not a euphemism, I really do do that. Um, because I wanna stay connected to the neighborhood. And in turn, I was able to help somebody out last night that was having a medical problem. Um, and that's important to me, is staying connected, because th the neighborhood um, needs that connection. Uh, my experience in most of my lifetime has <clears throat> of living in the first ward means I can hit the ground running, looking forward to working with the Lansing City Council for a positive outcomes for residents and businesses from Island Street to Philly Street. Um, and my motivations and objectives are simple. And people will ask, well, Ryan, why you do all this? Um, I do this because when I looked in the eyes of the residents, as they told me their, the issues they uh, most often face, I realized that others care deeply about Lansing and love the city as much as I do. Moreover, I had incredible mentors, as I mentioned in my bio, that set my sails towards light and doing what's right and not always what's easy. I do this because our family has public service in their DNA. We have roots in the First Ward going back well over 100 years. However, I do not do this for political reasons that are selfish. I do this because I love my city. Finally, to get to the question that was asked, which is what are the qualities that I bring that distinguishes me from the other candidates? I bring knowledge and perspective of how the city works, the ability and experience to build working relationships with partners, both private and public, passion, finding solutions to any issue with everyone involved because I believe there is a solution to every issue, <clears throat> patience, humility, and honesty. Thank you, Mr. Koss, you've shared quite a bit. Is there anything you wanna leave us with that you think is important for us to know before we uh, consider um, our, our applicants and, and actually cast our final vote later tonight? I appreciate your time, each and every one of you, and Lansing is rising. Thank you. That brings us to Mr. Glenn Lopez. Glenn here, fantastic. You come on down. Good evening. Good evening. We appreciate you being here. I appreciate you letting me come. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, sounds, sounds like the mic is on, so I think we're going to go. Uh, Mr. Lopez, yes, sir. Again, we really, really appreciate you being here. If you could, uh, and we won't start the time until I'm done, but if you could just start with a brief introduction of yes, um, you personally, professionally, uh, if you could talk a little bit about 
uh, some of the things that you've um, done to serve this community just in general. Cer certainly. Um, and then also answer that uh, question that we've asked every candidate tonight. Okay. Um, do you plan to, um, if you should be appointed, do you actually plan to run um, to actually fill the last year of the term? Um, okay. Which means, yeah, obviously there's an election in, in November. Thank you. Thanks so much. Well, I'm Glenn Lopez, born and raised in Lansing, Michigan, the north side, which is in Ward 1. I grew up in the north side. I'm a proud son of Mr. Eliterio and Delma Lopez. Some of you may know my mother. Okay? She was an activist here in the city of Lansing, trying to do better and did better for others in the community, more so in the Hispanic community as, and all communities. We are all one. Okay? She belonged to the Crystal Ray Community Center. She was a, the president of the board of, of uh, Crystal Ray Community for 20 years. I'm telling her because I'm trying to follow in her footsteps. I'm a late bloomer. I'm a late bloomer, however. But she was also uh, president of the Lansing Housing Commission for 25 years here in Lansing. While she was doing all that, I was playing baseball. I was playing softball, basketball. I am a, I graduated from Lansing Eastern High School. I'm a product of the Lansing Parks and Recreation. I was on the playground from 10 o'clock in the morning when they opened up till noon to go eat and come, go back to the playground. And at six o'clock when they were closed, I went to eat and then the, and they went home, the, the directors went home, but we still went to the playgrounds and played basketball, football, all right? So I did that for a number of years. I enjoyed it so much that I became an activity leader with the Lansing Parks and Recreation. So I was an activity leader, and this gentleman who just uh, was sitting here, I probably was one of the leaders in his act, because I remember doing those activi activities at, at, at uh, Grand River Elementary School, post Dope, uh, and I became a uh, building supervisor at Gaia Community Center and Foster Community Center. I, I'm, I got away from that a little bit because it was 5 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night, and I started thinking, well, do I want to work at night a lot? And no, I don't, but I am currently doing the um, bowling activity for Foster, okay? It's inclusion bowling at, at spare time. It's basically for special needs students. I'm a, I retire, I'm a retired from the Lansing School District. I worked for the Lansing School District 45 years. Most of my activities were uh, in the special needs classroom. Uh, I, my first job with them was with, with the CCLA program with Yvonne Kamal Kunul, which was a bilingual program in the Lansing School District. I was sent out with others, Hmong, Vietnam, Hispanics, uh, Mexican. We went to each school's to help the kids in there who couldn't uh, understand what was going on in the classroom. That's what we did. I did that for about five years. I moved on to the special needs program in Lansing. I worked at uh, Sexton High School for 15 years. And, uh, and uh, the first eight years was in a class of autism. All righty. The second, the, after that, I was transferred to the EI classroom, emotional parent classroom. At, at Sexton, they wanted to move the they wanted to move the classroom to Everett High School. Nothing wrong with Everett. Okay, <laughs> it's just so far. Okay, I wanted to stay in my in my area, the North Lansing area. So I got a job at Eastern High School in the in another EI classroom for two years. This was in 2014-15. They disbanded that and sent everyone to Beekman Center. I finished my my. Uh, Years with the Lansing School District at Beekman Center. I was a behavior specialist for half a year. I decided to say, it's time to go. Time for me to leave. I retired in 2015, 16 in the middle of the year. All right? Um, those were some great times, great times. My mother, I, 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 she's an activist. I wanted to follow in her footsteps, but I was so busy with my own life doing my own things. Okay? Born and raised in Lansing. The north side. One of the reasons I'm here tonight is because I had my grandkids out in the backyard a um, couple summers ago, I was just getting out of work. I work part-time, not for a hotel. Getting out of work, got home. There was police officers on the corners of my street blocking them off. I, I, I approached them. I talked to them all the time. So what is going on here? There was a shooting right behind our house in the street, the street behind where we live. 
kids are all now we had a hot day in the pool and the and the, and the blow up pools I had. Well, you think I should take the kids in the house? Uh, that would be a good idea because they didn't catch a day. So I thought, man, what is going on here in Northside? It was never like that when I was growing up. We got a fight or two, that was it. But then after that, we get we made friends. It's changed, completely changed. I want to try to do the best I can for you, for the citizens of Lansing, to stop this nonsense. But there's ways. There are ways. But I don't want to tell you just yet. And if I, get, if I move on, then I'll tell you what I, what I, can, what I think can be done. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I'm just telling you. Um, it's important to me to, I'm a late bloomer, okay? Uh, I probably should have done this a long time when my family's been, been involved in the city for a number of years. I've been involved with the uh, city a number of years, but not in this capacity. This is where it's at. You make the rules, you make decisions that we follow, whether we like it or not. We could come down here and voice our opinions Monday nights, our opinions, that's it. You make the rules. I wanna help you make rules. You know, I wanna be the one to say, yes, let's do this. No, I don't think the people would like that. We, are, we gotta remember, we're here for the people. And I also wanna revive the North side. I hear a lot about the ENO. They're doing a great job over there in the East side. I hear a lot about the, the Geyer area. They're doing a great job. You're doing a great job on the South side. I hear nothing about the North side. Nothing about the North side. I'm the North side. I want to revive the North side. I can do it if I'm there, okay? I can do it if I'm there. Okay, Thank that's you. me. Mr. Lopez, I may have missed it. Do you intend to run? If you are appointed, do you intend to run um, for, to, to actually fill this? Certainly. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, again, like so many others, um, you, you touched on a, a number of issues already. Uh, but we want to give you an opportunity to build yeah. upon some of your answers. Yeah. Why do you want to serve specifically on the Lansing City Council? I want to be part of this body, this body, as I said, to help better this community, the community of Lansing, Michigan. Doesn't matter what side of town, east side, west side, north side, south side. We are one, we have to be one, and we can overcome a lot of power problems that was going on in our little Lansing, okay? And I can do that if I'm there with you. I have ideas. Thank you. Uh, what do you know about the responsibilities and regular activities of this elected position? I know that you, you have committees. I know that you meet during the day or whenever you have opportunities to meet. If you're a teacher, you certainly can't meet during the day because you're busy, all right? I know that. Um, and then you meet whenever your committees meet, committees of the whole, committees of this, committees of that. You decide this, you discuss this. Do we have enough money to do that? Do we have, do we have enough money to build over here? Can we give the north side some money to help them do what they would like to do on that side? It's all done through committees. I've been on committees. While I was in the Lansing School, uh, Lansing School District, I served on two years on the uh, um, union. I was, also, I was a um, contract negotiator for the union, for the, Lansing, L, the LEA, which is the Lansing Educational Assistance. I occasionally still, have communications with Dave. Is Dave still the, the president of the LEA? Do you know? No. He's not, okay. Well, I work with Dave a lot and, and we got together. I communicate with him once in a while, but that's what you do. You get together, one or two or three people, you sit down, <clears throat> you sit down and discuss what you need to discuss for the betterment of the city, of the people. Thank you. Um, what qualities can you bring to the council that distinguish you from other candidates? Me. Me being here. Me wanting to do this. I'm 68 years old. I should not be here wanting to do this, okay? I'm retired. I've got trips coming up, all right? Okay, <laughs> all right? But something is calling me. I said, Lopez, your mother says, you need to get out there and, and help the people of the north side. And I'm not forgetting the rest of the, the area of Ward 1, because they're doing well. 
but the north side needs a lot of help. And I can show you. You want to walk with me in a warmer night? I will show you. I walk the north side every night, every day, or on my, like these other guys, on my bike. All right? That's what I bring to you. Me, myself, my compassion for the homeless. I talk to the homeless. They live right there. They live where I'm at. I talk to them. I help them. I offer them jobs. But they'd rather be on the corners. <laughs> Just so you know. I, can, I, think I, I, I think I can help this body as best I can. And I'm willing. I have the compassion. I have the passion and the compassion to do this. Should you ask, should you keep me going, okay? All right, we appreciate that. Is there anything else you'd like to add that you think is important for us to know before we vote later on tonight? I'm sorry, say that one more time. Is there anything else you would like to add uh, that oh. you think might be important for us to know before we vote? Just, later on just know that I'm around, I'm there. I'm a late bloomer. All this violence going around in this city has to stop, has to stop. But it's not stopping. We have to do something. I have ideas. I can give you ideas, but I'm running out of time because my ideas are going to take more than 55, 51 seconds. So should I move on, I will be more than happy to give you my ideas that I think will work. OK? That's thank cool. you so much. You're welcome. Appreciate your time. Thank you. And thank everybody else. All right, that brings us to Mr. John Schneider. We have John with us here tonight. Fantastic. Go ahead and come on down and join us in the well. Hello, Mr. Schneider. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. All right, fantastic. Um, so I've seen you in the back. I know that uh, you've kind of uh, seen a number of folks come up, and, and we've kind of taken them through the same um, kind of the same ordeal. Uh, if you could just very quickly give us a brief introduction uh, of yourself, per, uh, prof uh, personally, sorry, professionally, uh, anything you've done to serve community. And then lastly, um, folks have done a great job answering this last question, but um, whether or not you uh, actually intend to run for the position should you be appointed, uh, we'd appreciate that uh, in answer to that as well. So the yeah. floor is yours. Um, yeah, if, if elected, I, I do intend to run again. Um, uh, my name is uh, John Schneider. I've lived in the east side for about 11 or 12 years now. Uh, and time is slipping away with COVID. Um, but uh, over the, the course of this time, um, I have been a web designer, uh, and I've built websites for um, businesses and people across the city um, up into the present as I do uh, projects for folks um, outside of my regular um, day job. Uh, I worked uh, for Liquid Web in their sales department for about four years. Um, and then I uh, switched over to working for um, Neogen's uh, corporate, um, helping manage and maintain their website as well uh, across uh, the third several branches, working um, with their, like with groups in like China and uh, Europe, uh, as well as South America. Um, and then, uh, was part of their uh, layoffs during COVID. Um, when COVID hit, uh, I, um, I picked up some work uh, working with the uh, Ingham County Land Bank, uh, traveling across the east side and helping gardeners refill their water when we were having the deep heat stroke. It worked out really well, because um, at the time I was facilitating being a stay-at-home dad with my two kids. And so it was a good job that I could take the, my kids around with me um, to continue to work. And it was a lovely way to serve the city and meet folks uh, all across Lansing. Um, after that, uh, as virtual school settled in and stabilized, I uh, felt like I had some extra time. So I uh, took a job as a canvasser for an organization called For Our Future. Um, which uh, was really lovely because I got to go door to door across um, most neighborhoods across the city of Lansing and just ask folks uh, like what issues were most important to them and uh, what things really mattered most uh, in those moments and things that they needed to help in addressing. Um, it was a really lovely experience and honestly it really opened my eyes to uh, 
to really thinking about running for public service or doing more involvement in listening to folks and trying to help uh, advocate for their needs. Um, after that, uh, I um, uh, moved at, into a senior organizing role there, which is where I am now. Um, we are, now that COVID is really settled in, we're doing a lot more virtual, so I'm doing a lot more calling uh, folks and still kind of asking the same uh, basic question, which is like my favorite thing ever. Um, as such, I have a lot of experience uh, listening and helping people really dig down. I would say the central theme across all of my work history has been gravitating towards a, um, like a more like consulting aspects of every job. I really enjoyed um, working with each person individually and listening and helping them really find the root of their problems, um, helping them find like the, the root thing that needed to be solved uh, and helping them better understand their own thoughts and feelings about it and work to find a solution from there. Um, I found that I've been really effective in that role and uh, it's been really helpful. Um, in terms of helping with the, uh, with the city and with my community, I have played um, a support role. I, uh, my ex-wife worked as a urban manager for uh, Urbandale Farm. Um, and I've been involved with uh, folks uh, over at Eno in various capacities, um, mostly through that. I used to put on my name tag, uh, farm wife, uh, as I played a mostly supportive role, uh, and which was um, lovely. Uh, but my most of my eight, like work day was taken up uh, with with my work, and then also after that, I would spend most of my time with my kids. Um, so that is the, like, the majority of kind of where I come from. Uh, I wasn't really ever planning or expecting to run for something like this uh, or even considering it. But as I've talked to more folks and as I was going door to door, more and more people were asking me if I was, uh, which was first awkward and then uh, kind of became more and more sensible as other people have told me that I should consider it. All right, fantastic. We appreciate that. Are there other things that you want to uh, add regarding why you want to serve on the Lansing City Council? Um, yeah, I, I want to serve on City Council because um, serving is in my blood and it's part of who I am. Uh, I deeply appreciate and enjoy and find value and, um, and passion in listening to others and helping find solutions to problems as they're presented helping dig down to the very roots and cores of things uh, to, to find effective and reasonable things across that, that work for people with different views or motives or desires for the city. Um, it's, it's always been something that I've deeply and passionately enjoyed. Uh, and I see that as a core facet of this job and I think that that would be effective. And that's why I want to do it, so I can serve. All right, great. Um, what do you know about the responsibilities and regular activities of the selected position? Yeah, um, I know that there's a, um, a bevy of things. I don't, I don't know them as well as I would like. Uh, I know that you listen to appointments uh, provided by the mayor. I know that you manage and overview the budget and the pooled resources of the city to help meet the needs of daily life and maintenance um, therein. Uh, I know that a lot of the job is listening and, uh, and working to present and advocate for um, the folks of the first ward, for me specifically, uh, and make sure that uh, like businesses here are taken care of um, and that we have the things that we want uh, to make our city thrive. Thank you. Um, what qualities can you bring uh, to the council that distinguish you from other candidates? Yeah, um, I have uh, some experience working on boards, uh, but I think that really the thing that is most distinguished for me is um, my strong passion for the city and for the people that I meet and work with every single day, um, my neighbors and, my, um, and the, the businesses, businesses that, 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 that are Sprinkled, sprinkled across, across Michigan, Michigan Avenue, Avenue the, the businesses that sprinkled, sprinkled across Kamloops and, and on the north, north side. side. Um, these are all things that that need help right now. Um, as we work to try to find a new way forward and try to find a way to make life work uh, in the middle of COVID, and as we explore this uh, new life moving forward. All right. Thank you. 
Mr. Snyder, we still do have a little bit of time. Is there anything uh, you think is important to add before we actually vote later on tonight? Uh, no, I don't think so at this time. Thank you. Okay, no problem. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, that brings us to uh, Mr. Farhan Sheik Omar. All right, come on up. How's it going? Good, Good to see you. How are you? We Life appreciate you being here. You. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Is the green light on? Yeah. All right, fantastic. All right, Farhan. So what we'd like uh, is just a brief introduction, um, professionally, personally, uh, you know, those things that, you know, maybe <coughs> uniquely, sorry, qualify you for the position, um, anything you've done to serve as community. And lastly, um, is there an intent, should you be appointed, uh, to actually run for that last year of the term? Okay, thank All you. All right. President Adam Hussein, Council Member Spadafore, Council Member Spisley, Council Member Brown, Council Member Jackson, Council Member Garza, Vice President, Carol Wood, good evening. I want to thank you guys for this incredible opportunity. Uh, just to knock off the first question, yes, I will run uh, next year or this year. Um, my name is Farhan Sheikumar. Uh, my family and I came here as refugees in 2005. Now, this was time when tensions were very high in this country uh, after 9-11. However, I still remember um, the kindness and openness and open heart that this community and this city showed to my family and I. It is why I firmly believe that Lansing is and has always been a city of promise and possibility. Um, the first ward needs a leader who will listen to all sides of issues and be able to communicate with opponents, supporters, and colleagues. I've always been a leader who stands with this community to come up with solutions. I will always protect public trust and work from a place of integrity. Our ward has been divided, and I would like to bring unity, healing, and stability to this ward. What I do personally is I work for the school district, the Lansing School District. I am an assistant instru uh, instructor, but as you know, Adam, when teachers are out due to COVID, you know, I, I get called and I got to sub and <laughs> do all that fun stuff. Um, but I really, I am seeking this office not because of power, not because of fame, not because of title, any of that. I am seeking simply to improve lives and to bring people together and serve uh, the first ward. Okay, thank you. Um, to build on that, uh, why do you want to serve on the Lansing City Council? Um, as I said, I am not seeking this office for money, fame, or power. I am guided by principle, not driven by an agenda. I will bring transparency, honesty, openness, and a sincere willingness to compromise. I'm not here, nor am I interested, to make headlines. I simply want to improve lives. I simply want to make this city a better city for everyone to live in and to thrive. The city has given my family and I many opportunities. Till this day, it has given me many opportunities. And now, I would like to return those um, favors and give back to those who need it most. Okay, fantastic. Um, what do you know about the responsibilities and regular activities of this elected position? Um, as someone who has run for previous uh, positions, you know, you hear it all the time. You know, this is a strong mayor system and city council doesn't have any powers. And that's simply not true. You know, this is the body that not only reviews our budget, but actually approves it. And so if there's anything in the budget that city council does not like, they can send it back to the mayor and and if he vetoes it, city council can um, override that veto. Um, so this is also the body that establishes tax rates. This is also the body that passes ordinance and resolutions. This is also the body that regulates land um, use through zoning laws. This is the body that uh, regulates business activities through licensing and regulations. This is the body that communicates uh, policies and programs to residents. This is the body that responds to um, 
community uh, needs and complaints. So I believe this, this body does a lot of incredible work and it holds a lot of power and with power comes responsibility. And so I respect the work that you guys do and I thank you guys for your service. Thank you for that. Uh, what qualities can you bring to the council that distinguish you from other candidates? Um, I believe community awareness is the first step in effective community engagement. Diversity is what makes our community unique compared to other neighboring cities or even townships. By appointing me, you are giving voice to many communities. Um, I can help bridge the gap between the Somali community and the Lansing City Council, the Muslim community and the Lansing City Council, um, the African American community and the City Council, our youth and the City Council. Many of the kids who are dying in the city are only 18, 17, 19, 20. These kids are about a decade or even less than younger than me. Um, so when they see someone who's very close to them age-wise, who they can relate to, um, I, I believe you guys will have an ambassador, uh, someone who can go into the community and build bridges. Um, you know, we would love to have city council uh, members come to um, our mosque. Uh, you know, we have a mosque in East Lansing, but we also opened up a new mosque in Lansing on Pennsylvania, North Pennsylvania. So we would love to have you guys come during Ramadan, join us during Eid, and you know, confirm what we already know, which is Lansing is very diverse and we embrace diversity in this city. Excellent, thank you. Um, is there, sorry, is there anything else you'd like to add that you think is important for us to know before we vote later tonight? Um, I've always worked from a place of integrity and I don't do things because they're popular. I will always do what's right over what's popular. And I am willing to come on board, uh, be a sponge, learn from you guys. You guys are the veterans. Uh, I wanna learn from you guys. I wanna help serve the city, continue to serve the city. And I wanna thank you guys for this opportunity. Uh, you guys do an incredible job. And I, I and along with the Lansing residents all watching here tonight and those watching us from home, we're grateful for your service. We truly do appreciate that. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. That brings us to our last uh, candidate, Mr. And I hope I'm saying this right, Tiersten Walters. There you go. Fantastic. Come on down. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Mr. Walters. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing really, really well. Uh, so again, you're the last person. I think you've been here since 6 p.m., so we certainly appreciate your commitment to the process. I appreciate um, you. If you could, again, just introduce yourself, uh, give us some of that personal, professional background uh, that is un unique to you, uh, as well as uh, any you know, service to community that you think is pertinent uh, to the uh, position that you've applied for. Uh, and then lastly, um, let us know whether or not you intend to run uh, for the final year of the term should you be appointed. Thank you. All right, to knock it out uh, first so I don't forget, uh, yeah, I do intend on running if I'm honored with the appointment to this position in 22 and the uh, full term in 2023. Uh, I'm currently a State of Michigan employee for the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services uh, based out of Okemos, but I live in Lansing in the first ward. Um, I was formerly a student assistant with the Department of Technology Management and Budget. Uh, when COVID hit, I was sent home from that job. Uh, while I was away, I began volunteering at the Constellation Cat Cafe in East Lansing, uh, where I then worked in the future, and then I worked for the Potter Park Zoo right here in Lansing. Um, uh, my educational background, I graduated from Michigan State University in 2020. Uh, while I was at Michigan State, I was active on campus. I was president of the MSU Geography Club. Um, I ran for the Associated Students of Michigan State University while I was there. Uh, and I also attended Mott Community College in Flint prior to transferring to Michigan State. While I was at Mott, I was active in the community there. I volunteered at the Whaley Children's Center in Flint. Uh, and I was also a, a regular volunteer at the Special Olympics of Michigan. All right, thank you. Um, why do you want to run, Mr. Walters, uh, to serve on the Lansing City Council? Yeah, so ever since I've uh, come to Lansing when I transferred to Michigan State University, I've absolutely loved the city. Uh, I love the people, I love the culture, I love the history uh, of the city and its place as the capital of the state of Michigan. Uh, I also have just a passion to serve the people and try to uh, make the lives of every citizen, not only in the first ward, but of the city as a whole, 
uh, better, ensuring that everyone has an equal opportunity to succeed as they uh, go on both with education and employment. Uh, and I just would like to affect change at a larger level that would allow me to uh, do more things to assist people going forward. All right, thank you so much. What do you know about the responsibilities and regular activities of the selected position? Yeah, so they're obviously the uh, legislative body of the city of Lansing. Uh, they oversee the budget. Uh, but more than that, uh, you meet with local leaders, you meet with citizens, you advocate for either your ward or the city as a whole. You work to improve the lives of uh, the citizens of Lansing. And additionally, you're the voice of the people. So if you are a ward representative, you listen to the people of your ward, you gather what they care about, what matters to them, and then you advocate for that. Um, you advocate for the city as a whole. I truly believe Lansing is a fantastic city, and I think it can be uh, one of the leading cities in the state of Michigan and as the country as a whole going forward. Okay, thank you. What qualities can you bring to the council that distinguish you from other candidates? Yeah, so I think I could offer a fresh perspective to the council um, in ways of outreach and communication to um, definitely the younger crowd of uh, Lansing. I think there are a lot of ways of uh, communication that aren't utilized uh, specifically by the council, like social media or just other avenues outside of the current ones used, and I feel like that could be somewhere that I could assist as a council member. Uh, I also have experience within a legislative body uh, working at Michigan State as the uh, president of the MSU Geography Club. While I was there, I oversaw the writing of the club constitution. I oversaw getting it um, approved as a registered student organization within the university. Um, and also just working uh, within the community, um, different events, uh, assisting with the Constellation Cat Cafe for getting cats adopted in the area and also the uh, rescuing portion with um, Saved by Zaid. So just different things uh, that I've done. Uh, also, I currently have experience within a governing body working for the state of Michigan. Um, I'm a current state employee with MDHHS, so I understand that things in government work a different way than elsewhere, and I feel like I have definitely uh, experience uh, with that working as a student assistant prior, as a department technician now. That gives me a little bit of insight as to how things work, how things can be more efficient, and how things can be done better going forward. And I feel like I could offer uh, that to the city council as well, ways to innovate and improve going forward, and to make sure that the people of Lansing have a governing body that is looking out for them and is assisting them improve as they go forward. All right, thank you for that. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add that you think is important for us to know before we vote uh, later on tonight? Yeah, so I just absolutely appreciate the opportunity. I know it's getting a little late and it's a little warm in here, so I appreciate everybody uh, staying and listening tonight. And uh, I'd really just like to make sure that the city of Lansing allows each and every citizen, both in the first ward as an advocate for them and the city as a whole, has an equal opportunity to succeed. Uh, some things that I'm personally passionate about, uh, public safety, ensuring that citizens are safe and secure. Um, working to increase voter turnout for elections. Uh, I feel like the vote is something that matters a whole lot that a whole lot of people don't utilize as often as I believe they should. And I think as a council person, you can either use the official seat or a more informal method to increase voter participation. That's something I'm personally passionate about. And uh, also ensuring that every citizen in Lansing has the opportunity to have equal opportunities for success through both education and through employment. Um, I've, one thing that I've uh, truly appreciated from the council and the budget priorities is the GED passage and prep program. I'm personally very um, pro-education, um, child of two parents who have dedicated their entire lives to education, and I truly believe that through education that everybody can improve and society as a whole can advance a whole lot more than uh, without. And so just I'd uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, utilize those and uh, to offer the city something new. Fantastic. We certainly appreciate uh, you being here. We appreciate the time that you've committed uh, to us uh, tonight. Uh, and best of luck. All right, thanks. All right, yep. All right folks. So for those of you still in attendance, um, I want to say just 
how much I appreciate you all uh, kind of sticking with us through this process. Uh, folks that, that know me, um, kind of know my personality, know that I'd rather just sit down and, and talk issues and, and hash things out and, and really figure out, you know, going from there what the best path forward is. Um, but, but again, this was a, a process that was, was necessary. I appreciate my colleagues uh, accommodating, uh, and again, certainly appreciate uh, your patience in the audience. Um, that being said, before we get on to um, discussion action item 5M, uh, which is the actual voting on first ward council member finalists, what I want to do uh, is open it up uh, for some conversation, um, some commentary, uh, potentially some del deliberation, um, but even if you want to keep those uh, comments general uh, just to the, uh, the crop of individuals we have in front of us um, and maybe the process, um, this, is, this is the time. So do we have any comments, questions, anything? Uh, Mr. Garza. Thanks, Council President. I just want to take the time to say <clears throat> thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, win or lose, I hope I still can see you, uh, continue to see you in the community, working for your passions and, and moving the city forward. So thank you for your, your hard work and being here in front of us and, and, uh, and telling us about your story. So thank you. Councilwoman Spitzley. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm going to... Um, piggyback on what Councilmember Garza said, um, and, and thank you all for being here. I, I can't imagine, um, you know, it must be incredibly difficult, but I, I do want to stress that, you know, in the, in the event you're not choosing, chosen, there are so many boards and commissions that we have um, that I would encourage you to join and encourage you to, to avail yourselves upon. Um, you know, that's, you know, when you talk about the real work in council is, you know, but the real work a lot of times is also on boards and commissions and they do um, and they impact how the city is run in ways that you just, you, you never know. Council member um, Hussein and I started on parks board. I had no idea how, you know, important it was the parks board was. And so um, if you're not um, selected, I would please encourage you to look at the boards and commissions that we have on our web page and, and apply for one of those as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you to everybody who came out. Um, it's going to be a very difficult choice. And I know it's not, but I just want to double down on if this was ranked choice voting, we could truly just pick our top three and not worry about any scheming or if they go against each other or anything like that. Um, so it's gonna be very hard and, and it's not personal to anybody if, you know, I don't choose you, everybody would do a great job, but it's just the nature of what we have to do today. So thank you for applying. Vice President Wood, uh, Councilman Spitz, or I'm sorry, Spadafore, and then we'll go to Mr. Brown. Did you wanna end? Yeah. Okay, let's go to Councilman Spadafore. Thank you, Madam Vice President, Mr. President. I just wanted to echo comments from my colleagues to folks out there in the audience. I really appreciate the way 11 folks interested in stepping up to serve the city. Um, a lot of times, uh, these types of appointments, you see no one apply and in communities across the, uh, across the state, and it's really refreshing to see so many qualified and interesting candidates serve in these roles. Um, I'll echo, there's gonna be one person selected tonight, or tomorrow, rather, and I will echo again what everyone said. Uh, not getting the appointment does not mean that your career in public service should be over. The Lansing School Board passed on me about 15 years ago and I showed them. So I, I would encourage you all to continue to stay involved in your community and do what you can uh, as you continue to, as you've always done, but to uh, make a difference in our community. You can do that from a lot of places that is not at this table, but I still am just very refreshed and pleased to see so many competent and just super qualified candidates show up tonight and express interest in, in joining the Lansing City Council and serving our city. Um, there are a lot of things to think about and we've got to make a decision tonight, but I just wanted to make sure that I threw my thanks in there as well because um, it, it takes a lot to sit down in front of this this well uh, with the uh, flame throwing lights and, set and all that and make your case. So thank you very much. Councilman Brown. Uh, thank you, President Hussein. I just wanted to say, um, uh, first and foremost, thank you uh, to yourself as well as uh, Vice Chair uh, uh, Carol Wood and uh, Sherry Boak for doing a phenomenal job um, in this process with um, absolute integrity. To everybody who has um, applied, 
uh, you know, we truly do appreciate you to come down to share your story, to have that transparency and put yourself out there because you want to be the difference in your community. So I, um, I'm um, honored that you would come and very appreciative. And we thank you. And of course, as everyone else has said, there's only one candidate that can be appointed. Um, but um, I echo um, Councilwoman uh, Spitzley that even myself, I was on a board and commission as well. And the work uh, that I've been able to do in that capacity has been very impactful and um, eye-opening uh, for the city as well. So good luck. Thank you so much, Vice President Wood. Uh, thank you, President uh, Hussein. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank my colleagues for their uh, diligence here and I watched everybody taking notes and play, paying extreme amount of attention to the speakers. I want to thank everyone who came out uh, this evening who made the choice to apply. Uh, it, as many of us have said, it's not always easy to sit there and talk to uh, counsel and know that you're being watched on TV. Sometimes when you're knocking on those doors during a campaign, it's one-on-one -on -one and you feel closer to the public at that point versus sitting here and being um, judged. We have a phenomenal group of people to pick from. So whoever we pick, I believe we will be uh, forever grateful for that person who comes and fills the position for first ward. So I want to thank you for um, applying. I want to thank you for making the job tough. Um, it is the tough decisions that when you're sitting here as a council member that help make you a better council member as well. Weighing those decisions and how it will impact the community, uh, we understand that. So again, thank you for coming out. Thank you for being part of the process. As everyone has said, there's other ways if you are not chosen that you can, again, continue to serve the community. And uh, we know that we can reach out and help you if there are things that you're interested in. So um, with that, thank you. Yeah, and I, can, I can't say any better than, um, than the six of you. Um, what I will say is, as I, as I look through the, the um, applications, as I look through the resumes, um, I knew we had an incredible group of people. Uh, but when you came down here, the, the passion that we felt and the commitment, um, I don't know that I was expecting that from every single person that sat in that seat. Um, and, and candidly, uh, I did not know this was going to be as difficult uh, of a decision uh, as we now essentially find ourselves resting with. Um, First Ward, no matter what happens, is in really good hands. Uh, because what I know is um, not only will the individual that's appointed uh, do the work of fiercely advocating uh, for the first ward, uh, but I know that everybody in this room uh, is going to work with that individual uh, in fiercely advocating for the first ward. Uh, and so I think it's, uh, it's a phenomenal day to be a first ward resident, truly. Uh, and I, I think folks should be really, really proud of what they saw here tonight. Um, with that being said, um, what we are going to do, folks, uh, so in the uh, pocket on the right side of your binder is your ballot. Um, and again, uh, you can vote uh, for not more than three uh, candidates. Uh, we will then have staff collect. Uh, make sure you sign uh, that ballot, and then we'll, we will uh, have those read into the record. Okay? Thank you.
All right, officer. What's I'm sorry. Fantastic. Okay, so if we could have uh, Clerk Volk, she will actually read uh, the ballots into the record. Uh, Council Member Spitzley, we have Brian Daniels, Benjamin Dodd, and Farhan. Farhan, I'm sorry. Farhan Shakir Omar. Council Member Wood, we have Brian Daniels, Lysandra Jones, Ryan Cost. That's your signature, right? For Council Member Garza, we have Brian Daniels, Benjamin Dodd. For Council Member Jackson, we have Caitlin Kavanaugh, Brian Daniels, and Farhan Sarik Amar. Council Member Hussein, we have Brian Daniels, Benjamin Dodd, Ryan Cost. Council Member Brown, we have Caitlin Kavanaugh, Brian Daniels, and Samuel Klan. And for Council Member Spadafore, we have Caitlin Kavanaugh, Brian Daniels, Benjamin Dodd. That's what I show for the top three. Is that what you show? Oh. All right, folks. So, uh, and I do know that uh, Clerk Swope in the back uh, was also tallying. Um, what we came out with was seven votes for Brian Daniels. Uh, Benjamin Dowd had four, uh, and Caitlin Cavanaugh to round out the top three uh, ended ended up with three votes. Okay. Um, so what's going to happen from here, since we did not have a tie in that third place position, uh, what's going to happen is staff will actually reach out uh, to you three uh, by 9 a.m. tomorrow to schedule those 30-minute interviews. We'll, we'll, we're going to delve just a little bit deeper. You have already received those questions. Okay, so we do ask that you guys uh, arrive uh, potentially um, early for that. Um, we will obviously start the uh, meeting as we always do with public comment. Uh, that public comment may last up to 30 minutes. Um, but should it not, we want to be able to get started uh, immediately. Again, we want to thank you uh, for being here. We want to thank you uh, for your service to the community and, and for those folks that were not chosen uh, to go on uh, to the next uh, round. Please uh, stay involved, and I personally uh, would love to grab coffee uh, with you and, and, and figure out how we're going to work to move this community together. Uh, for, uh, I'm sorry, move this community uh, forward together uh, in the very near future. Okay? Thank you so much. Uh, with no other business before the body, folks, we are adjourned at 845.